Hey guys, Phil Baumhart here. So for today's video, I'll be making a Indian war club. Basically a, a style that was used by the Indian tribes of the uh, Great Lakes region, uh, Eastern Woodlands. So from my brief research, uh, historically, they would uh, look for beech saplings growing out of the river, so they would have kind of that natural uh, curve of the growing tree, and they would use the root ball of that tree for the end of the uh, club, so it would be very dense, very hard, suitable for a weapon, and uh, the curve of the handle would just be taken from the sapling itself. There's some very uh, elaborate ones, very finely carved. Uh, they took a great deal of pride in that work and it was clearly made by uh, craftsmen of that period. And the one that I want to be making is going to be used as a movie prop uh, for the film Jack London, Son of the Wolf. That's an independent feature film that I've been working on here in uh, Michigan. I've made a couple of big knives for that. I've uh, made a backpack. I supplied some of the uh, firearm props for that film as well. And I'll be updating you guys as we get closer to uh, releasing that. It should be somewhere in uh, early 2020, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. So I've got a nice big birch log that I'm going to be using to make the club out of. It's a lighter weight wood. It'll be easy to uh, carve and work, which will help me get it done quicker. And then it's also going to help keep it lightweight, so when using it in fight scenes, it will work better and be safer for the actors to use. So I'll show you what I got, and we'll get started. Okay, so here's what our log looks like. I only need this thing to be about 20 inches overall. So I've scored it here and here, and then uh, I got this designated for the uh, the club portion of it. And because of the the log has got a little bit of a curve to it, you kind of see the log has got a little bit of a curve to it. Uh, this will be the front of the club. So first thing I'll do here, I'll put in some uh, cuts with the uh, the saw, and that'll give me control for. Uh, splitting it down and thin thinning it down to a more workable dimension. So from a design standpoint, here's where I'm looking at. So this is the part that I just uh, flattened out. This is still the trunk part. This will be made into the uh, the ball end, so I'm really only worried about this area here. Uh, but I'm basically going to shape up this side. So if we look at the log like that, you can kind of get the idea is that's where I want the, uh, the curve to be. So the curve actually needs to end right there at about the midpoint and then come down to there. So we'll flip it over on this side and I'll uh, I'll draw that out. Because here, then we'll have the, uh, the ball itself kind of come back around like that. I'll probably leave it a little bit big just to make sure
Okay, so I got that bark off. So now we got a cylinder. So it's still way oversized. So we'll start squaring this up. I still want to leave a lot of this mass here because I want to get that three dimensionality. But chances are it won't really be much wider than this. But better to have too much than uh, too little. That's what she's looking like right now, still way, way, way oversized, but we're whittling it all down. Okay, so I kind of got the shape drawn out here. I started uh, chiseling out the, uh, the ball here, and I've got a lot of material right in here. So I got this kind of drill bit right here. I'm going to see if I can just cut through that. Okay, so I'm going to have to flip it over and uh, get it on the other side. So we'll just uh, finish the hole with this bit so I can line it up properly. So one of my new tool acquisitions has been a uh, angle grinder. This is a DeWalt uh, four and a half inch. I got the DeWalt because it's uh, USA made. Uh, seems to have really good build quality. I've used it a little bit, um, mainly just for the cutoff wheel. So I've got a uh, flap disc on here. We're going to try this out on the wood and see what it does. I've uh, seen people using these on the internet, so we'll see how it works for me. And uh, I think this is going to be the uh, debut use of this tool in one of my videos.
Okay, so that's uh, so that's working out real well. So this is all going to have to come out right here. So I might just use a saw and cut that down. And then the uh, the handle itself is going to have to thin down quite a bit. So uh, it's taking shape nicely though. Angle grinder is definitely helping. If I was trying to do this, if I was trying to do this all by hand, it would be uh, you know take much longer. Okay, so it uh, seems to be going pretty well. Here's what she's uh, looking like. So uh, you can definitely see the uh, the shape I'm going for there. Head's still probably way too big. The uh, handle's too thick as well. Let me step back so you can get the whole thing in there. There we go. Yeah, so this needs to come down a little bit more and this consequently will probably get shaved down as well. Overall, I'm really happy with the way that, that uh, angle grinder is working out. So this is turning out pretty cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, continue taking down the uh, the handle here. Uh, right now it's too big, so uh, we'll work on that. I'm liking the shape. It is going to have to get cut down probably to about there. I can't have this thing, uh, the overall length, be much more than 18 inches because this is supposed to be uh, fit into a character's uh, backpack. So Otherwise, I would have just left it this uh, long. This is a good good length, and you got a, it's a nice uh, curve from the wood and all that. This would have been a good length. Uh, for fighting because he had some real leverage so uh, I am probably gonna have to shorten it down unfortunately so uh, we're getting there though Okay, so now I'm just going through and uh, going over with some uh, with a sanding uh, disc on the uh, on the grinder here. I'm trying to take out any of the big uh, chatter marks. Uh, this thing isn't great for that kind of finishing work, but like in here, I'm going to kind of neaten up that end there, and then I'm just going over the rest of it with uh, regular sandpaper by hand. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, I could spend a lot more time doing the, uh, the fine sanding and getting out know, all the little shadow marks and everything. But, you know, for film purposes, this will be just fine. I want it to look like it's an old uh, tool that's been used a lot, that's been in a bunch of battles, killed a few people. So I'm going to have a, uh, a real dark, I want the head to be kind of dark and sort of gradually fade to 
you know, a lighter uh, brown, still dark overall, but it'll be darker in the head area, like it's a uh, blood blood stain and stuff like that. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is just going to be to uh, burn it. The wind's not doing many favors. All right, let's take us into the garage, finish it up in there. So now to uh, further the kind of blood stain aged effect, we're going to start with some uh, Sedona red wood stain here. And I'm going to go for just, again, kind of the ball area. And then I'll go over it uh, later with, you know, kind of regular darker min wax. And then uh, I'll put linseed oil all over this to kind of finish it up. So with this scorched wood, it really soaks up the stain, and I'll do the same with uh, linseed oil. So I think that this uh, birch was actually kind of green, it seemed wet on the inside. I got this tree from a neighbor, I think they cut it down, I want to say it was last spring to be honest, so I, you would think that it would be, uh, you know, dry by now, but didn't appear that way so you can kind of see the red leaking through especially in these cracks so I think that should give the effect that I want the key is just I don't want any uh, white wood because that birch is very bright and so just to be clear birch would not be you know the right wood for making one of these for real although it does have some good heft to it I wouldn't want to get hit by it, but I think that the birch would probably break pretty easily. But the upside is that for this kind of thing, it was very easy to just, you know, sand that off with the angle grinder. If this was a harder, denser wood, it probably wouldn't be that easy to, to do that. Okay, so I put another uh, coat of stain on there. This was just the, uh, the dark uh, provincial stain. And I think since this, I had this so, uh, finished so uh, roughly you know it was just with the uh, the angle grinder and then you know I went over it just a little bit with the uh, 60 grit sandpaper it really just soaked up that uh, stain and uh, you know even down here where I didn't burn it it just sort of went uh, black but uh, that's okay I mean it looks it's uh, looking good you know there's some uh, texture there's a little bit of the red showing up not a whole lot just a touch so this is this is really what I was going for I cut the end off here Actually, it might have been like that. I don't even remember now. But uh, cut this end off here, sand it off. You can see just by removing that much of it, uh, how much it's changed. So it's uh, especially how short the handle is now. The the head feels exceptionally big. But uh, I don't know. I'm happy with it. I'm not gonna cut it down or uh, you know make it smaller. If I have to, I will. Uh, but right now, it's a it's a pretty scary club. Maybe you know. Hopefully, as long as it's not uh, comically oversized, we'll be all right. But you know, other than, otherwise, it should be a scary weapon. And the guy, the uh, the character who's going to be wielding this, the actor, uh, is just a really big, strong guy. Um, and so I think this will fit his uh, character really well and make him a force to be reckoned with. So um, I'm going to throw some uh, linseed oil on here, and this will be. Uh, the final step of the process. So yeah, this just soaks up the oil like nothing. Uh, one, the wood was real rough, and then hitting it with the fire dries it out, opens up all those pores, and so this just is gonna soak up the oil. So I'll probably go over this uh, 
quite a few coats because the uh, the oil finish is really going to go a long way as far as making it look like a um, an old worn weapon you know maybe passed down through generations so this has been you know this is dark with the blood of enemies and the sweat of their forefathers okay so we'll uh, check back in a few days and we'll uh, see how it fares once it's dried all right so here's a look at the uh, finished club I actually ended up uh, kind of sanding uh, the handle back again and then putting some more uh, of that red stain on there and then linseed oil on top of that again just to kind of lighten it up and you can see uh, it's got a little more brown a little more of the wood grain showing and then I left the uh, the ball just black I wanted the, the head to stand out a little more from the rest of the uh, the handle so overall really happy with the way this turned out I wasn't sure how it was gonna go this is my first time carving uh, something like this but you can see it's it's uh, got some real good definition so this is much bigger than what the actual ones uh, how they were actually made but that's okay I think this will look good uh, on camera looks pretty uh looks pretty intimidating so i would be remiss not to smash something uh to close this video out so let's see how it does That's all I got for you guys, so hopefully you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll probably do some uh, updates as far as the uh, progress on the Son of the Wolf film goes, so I'll let you know when that uh, comes out. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, subscribe to the channel, and you can also follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and if you want your own uh, custom knife or axe, check out my Etsy web store, or send me a message, and uh, I'll see if I can make you a uh, custom weapon of your choosing. So, so as always, I appreciate your support, thanks for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.